Hey everybody, are you in the market for a Jeep Gladiator but you don't know which one's right for you? Well in this video we're going to walk you through the different models available and try and help you save money picking it right the first time. Let's go take a look. Hey everybody, I'm Bubba with Exus Jeeps and we build badass Jeeps. In this video we're going to talk about the different models of Jeep Gladiator that are available to you, which one might be right to you and hopefully save you some money. The other thing I want to touch on when we're talking about saving money is tread lightly. If you don't know what that is, Google it, go sign up for it. It's going to guarantee you 1% below invoice, so it's a great bargaining chip to take in with you when, you, when you're ready to make that purchase. The downside is it takes 30 days before it can go into effect, so go sign up for it right away. It's good for 12 months, uh, but it's going to take 30 minutes before FCA is going to re release that control number to you, so go do it right away. We're in Lockhart, Texas at Benny Boyd Dodge Jeep Chrysler. This is where we bought our Gladiator. The guy that sold it to me, he is now a sales manager here. This is Mike Marshall. He's been a Jeeper for a long, long time. Retired from the Air Force, correct? And he decided he wanted something to do, so he came and sold Jeeps, and he's pretty good at it. So they made him a sales manager. And uh, I called him up the other day. I said, hey man, can we come over and shoot a video, talk about the different models? He said, hell yeah. So uh, here we are today. He's walked me through some of the different builds and options, and I'm gonna walk you through them. So let's get started. So basically this is almost as stock as you can get. There is a, a cheaper model, the Sport, which is gonna come with uh, roll-up windows, uh, a little bit cheaper stereo than this one has. Not a whole lot, but it is gonna be less and uh, uh, less equipped and less priced. This is a great Gladiator to start with if you're gonna kinda do the same build plan that we did with Dana 60s and maybe you're gonna change out uh, the interior some. This is a great package to start with. It's probably the most economical package. I don't see a lot of people buying the sport packages with the roll-up windows anymore, but I guess there's a few of them out there and you can even order them without air conditioning for those of you up north where it stays cool enough. In Texas, we gotta have air conditioning, so that's, a, that's definitely coming with it. But let's take a look at the inside. You can kind of see what a sport looks like. Uh, nothing fancy. This one does have slush mats in it. Doesn't have the headliner package. We'll talk about that again some more in a minute but this is about as basic as it gets 3.6 pentastar v6 engine eight speed automatic transmission in this one this is a great place to start like i said if you're going to really build out your jeep and to go off-roading this in my opinion is one of the best packages you can get the only thing additional that i would add to this would be the the max tow package which if you guys are going to be running 37 so the max tow package is great because it's going to come with uh upgraded transmission cooler i believe it does come with larger brakes 14 gears it also comes with the um, ironically comes with the wide track axles so the basically the same axles that are in the rubicons minus the lockers so i think for you guys that may be wanting to put lockers in them uh, the aftermarket is going to come available for lockers that will drop right in these you're going to re-gear it anyways if you're running 37s so adding in a different carrier at the same time it's gonna save you a lot of money over the, over the long run over buying a uh, Rubicon, which we're gonna look at in a minute. Great option if you're gonna be building them out, but if you want something fancier right off the bat, this isn't the one for you. We're gonna back this one up and we're gonna pull the Overland package out and take a look at it. Look at this beautiful weather we're experiencing today as we came out to look at Jeep Gladiators. It's lovely. Okay, the next model we're going to talk about is the Overland model. Now, I would compare this to, in the Wrangler models, the Sahara. So it's going to be the fancier, you know, it's going to have some of the more fancier accoutrement. Accoutrement. Leather seats, navigation, stuff like that. We're going to walk through that in a minute. But as you see, this one is the Gator Green. This is the new color that's out. Uh, there's been some, I don't know, discussion online about the color coming out and it not matching up with the swatch. Millions of people from all over the world saw it, and now it's being called the Jeep that broke the internet. Take a look. What color is this Jeep? Pretty normal, but in my opinion, it actually looks better than the Swatch does. And for the, those of you that are familiar with our JK that we own, ours was a tank green, so I'm pretty partial to this color anyways. But enough about the colors. Let's talk about what makes it an Overland model. So it's still got the regular Dana 44 axles in it, nothing special about them. Pretty much the same axles that are in the Sport. Really, the, the difference is in the interior. On this one, if you look in the back, it has a bed liner. I'm not sure if that's standard with the Overland, but this one happens to have it. So that gives you a good uh, look at what, what the bed would look like if you had it 
bed line versus non bed line like in the sport that we looked at but really check out this interior um and this is pretty much you know not they're not all going to come with the this is the um saddle color if you also come in and look at the stereo he's got the 8.4 touch screen and you connect four seat and you look in the back here you fold the seat down it's got a larger subwoofer than that alpine stereo system subwoofer all right another cool option on the overlands uh basically any of them with leather seats is the center console here in the back seat you actually pop this guy down right here and you have more cup holders all right and added benefit of having leather seats you guys with cloth seats like me you're not getting that also you got the uh power points here in the back that you can plug a 110 inverter so you can power up your laptop and stuff like that and it has the usb connectors then you're looking at this particular model i don't think all the overland models come with a headliner do they no basically that's pretty much uh the stereo so let's talk about the front of the interior of this uh this overland model because it's pretty fancy first thing i'm going to notice is instead of having the uh the anodized kind of look it has this leather uh trim uh, over over the rest of the dash that's that's nice and fancy a little bit too much for me not really what i'm into but what's really cool on the Uconnect, Uconnect 4C is in the apps itself. So if we go in here and boom, we hit apps, we've got all kinds of cool stuff going on. So let's check out off-road pages. All right. Uh, you know, basically all your gauges are going to be right up here. Instead of you having to scroll through uh, the interface on the dash, everything's up here already. That's nice. I like, like having all my gauges right there where I can see everything. The other thing is pitch and roll. So this is going to show you kind of like what's going on with the Jeep as you're off-roading, all your different angles uh, and camber. And then drivetrain. So basically it'll tell you which, which locker's locked, whether you're in four high, four low, and then Rubicon model if you're disconnected on the front. So pretty cool, but I like this other stuff that's in here. Go to weather, have weather radar right there on your dash. That's awesome. You're out camping somewhere off the grid. Uh, if you, as long as you have satellite service connected, then you should have, you should be able to tell what's going on with the weather out there. Movie listings, I'm not getting into that. So lots of cool stuff going on down here. Fuel prices, you want to try and find whatever the best deal on fuel is on your route. Yeah, this ought to be able to do it for you. So pretty cool. Definitely, um, if you're into the, the nicer amenities of whatever Jeep's offering here, then yeah, this is definitely the one that's going to come with the most most stuff so all right well i think that pretty much covers the overland i think this is a really good model for for people that just they want a gladiator they don't necessarily want to go off-road in it maybe they just want to do some light camping and stuff like that are you not entertained probably not going to more, run more than the stock size tires maybe 33s on it but they're not going to go crazy on it so this is a good model for you to buy um i know the ladies like to have the nicer stuff in them so this is definitely one for them now we cover this Let's go check out the Rubicon and why you would buy a Rubicon. This particular model right here is one that's pretty popular at the dealership. It's not the higher end Rubicon, it's the lower end Rubicon. It's still going to come with a nice interior, just won't come with leather. It doesn't come with an 8.4 touchscreen, it comes with a 7 inch standard. So there's some things about the Rubicon that are standard over the other models, but you can still upgrade to them. So let's talk about what makes a Rubicon a Rubicon. 14 gears, selectable lockers, front sway bar disconnect, and in particular on the Gladiator, you're going to get some more armor in the back towards the bottom of the bed. We'll point that out later on. It is going to come with a little bit of a lift, not much, but some, and it's going to have Fox shocks already on it. 33 inch uh, Falcon Wild Peak tires. And this particular model has plastic bumpers. You can upgrade and get the steel bumpers, which will allow you to add winches and stuff like that to them without having to buy aftermarket parts, or maybe some aftermarket parts, but not all whole aftermarket replacement so that's really great for people that want to um, buy a really capable jeep right off the bat and without having to spend a ton of money and mostly time upgrading it it's already done so you literally buy one of these and put a two inch lift on it and run 37s right out the gate and you're gonna be fine the only downside to doing that with the Rubicons is the 14 gears, you will still lose eighth gear as you go up into 35s and 37s. So you will want to re-gear them pretty quick if your plan is to go right into those. Let's take a look at the interior and what this particular Rubicon comes with and what it can come with. Look on the inside, cloth seats with red stitching. 
uh, the red dash panels in there. This particular model does have the seven inch touchscreen. That's pretty standard on these. One thing I want to know on any of this, on the Gladiators when you're buying them, I highly recommend that you do the seven inch touchscreen at minimum because the backup camera is going to look phenomenal in there compared to the standard uh, stereo that you can get with these. So definitely spring for the better stereo. You're going to thank me for it when you're backing up this stuff. Skid plates back here. This is something different that you're not going to find on the other models is this skid, this uh, rock slider right here in the back. Uh, that's very specific to the Rubicon. I think you can buy it and add it on later, but it's standard equipment with the Rubicons. And now I'm going to go into my spiel about why I don't think you should buy a Rubicon. I don't think Jeep's going to like this part, but I'm going to say it anyways. So if you're like me and you're building the truck up the way it is, you really don't need a Rubicon. I mean, we're going to change out the axles anyways. We're going to be changing a lot of stuff in the drivetrain. So you're, you're going to be spending a lot of money that you don't need to. The other thing is, with the introduction of the eight-speed automatic, we really don't feel there's a need for the transfer case anymore being four to one. First gear in the eight-speed automatic is 4.7 to one. So by the time you re-gear these, um, maybe you add Dana 60s and 538 gears like we did, you're never gonna notice the difference between the sport transfer case and the Rubicon transfer case. So really, this Jeep isn't for you, those of you that are gonna build something like we did, you know, with, four and a half to six and a half inches of lift and one ton of axles, 40 inch tires. This really is not gonna be for you. You're gonna end up spending a lot more money than you should have. This is really for those of you that plan on only going to 37s and that's it. We could put a two inch lift on this, this model right here. You could throw 37s on it. We can re-gear it and you're never gonna have to change anything else on this Jeep again. You can really just run it with just a minimal amount of modifications. But if you plan on doing a whole lot of modifying, this definitely is not the Jeep for you. I recommend going with the Sport. Let's take a look around at some more. It does have LED tail lights, but it doesn't have the backup sensors and stuff in it. And now for the cool options. Something that is not standard on all the models, but I thought it was, was the LED uh, package on them. That includes fenders, headlights, and tail lights. Uh, these are all upgrades on them. I believe if you buy the advanced warning systems or whatever like that, then the rear tail lights are going to be LED, but still doesn't mean the front is. As you can see, they are pretty cool. Got a halo around them. Now, a lot of people pay a lot of money for aftermarket headlights with halos, but really the fenders are what is cool, in my opinion, on the LED stuff. In fact, so cool that I went ahead and, I went ahead and upgraded the lights in our fenders to the LEDs because I liked it so much. Definitely an option I recommend if you were buying a Gladiator brand new, go ahead and get LED headlights because I mean, it's just like they were in all the other Jeeps in the past. The, the incandescent bulbs don't light up enough to give us any good light at night when we're driving. So this is definitely a good safety feature I would say spend the money on is the LED package. One of the options you can spring for when you're purchasing or ordering is the rear tail lights. You can't get LED. This particular model has the safety group, which is gonna have the backup sensors and the side sensors. So when you're driving along, somebody pulls up next to you, uh, this is gonna detect them. And it's gonna flash in your side view mirror to let you know that they're there. Really cool option. Downside, super expensive. So if you break this, expect to pay a lot to replace it. I don't know if it's completely worth it or not. I ordered it with mine. Now it's being explained to me how much it costs. I kind of wish maybe I hadn't done that and just got LED tail lights. Okay, so we didn't have a Sport S Max tow package available on the lot, but Mike happens to own one and he had it here today, so he backed it in. We're gonna talk about one of the key features of a Sport S Max tow package that most people don't even, I myself included, didn't even know it existed until he pointed it out. But this is for those of you that maybe you're looking at one on a lot when nobody's there, because that's what a lot, of, a lot of us like to do, so we don't get hassled by salesmen. You're out there looking at them, you're like, well, is this a max tow package or not? A uh, really uh, clear indicator that has now been pointed out to me is right here on the fender. So as you could see on this fender, the max tow package is going to have this little lip right here. A regular Sport or Rubicon or anybody else, they're not going to have that. It's just going to be flush right there. So max tow package, for whatever reason, has this little lip on the front and rear. Also, what's cool about these fenders two-piece fenders so if you want to take this apart you can actually separate this lower half all the way from here down you can take that out i believe american adventure lab makes a cool light that replaces this one so you can gain a lot of ground clearance just by modifying the fenders without having to cut them 
So pretty cool. Mike's got a really nice Jeep. I'm waiting for him to bring it by so we can put a lift on it, but he hadn't done it yet. As you can see, it's called Doppler. Mike's a weather geek. I don't know why, but he is. What's cool about Mike's Jeep is it's a lot like my Jeep when I bought mine. It's a Sport S Max tow package. So this is the Gladiator that I think a lot of you people out there that are gonna be modifying should buy. Why? Why? Because it comes with basically the same axles as a Rubicon minus the lockers. So you're gonna get wide track axles, upgraded brakes, upgraded transmission cooling, and 14 gears. What's really nice about that is lockers are gonna be available for those axles at some point. I'm not even sure if you can buy them from the dealer yet and put them in, but eventually you will be. I know there's a few companies out there that have been hounding to make it, and when they do, we could take a Sport S Max tow package, bring it in, put it on the lift. We can use the same gears that are in there already if you want. I would probably recommend re-gearing it anyways at that point. But putting in a locker in that Jeep and, and running 37s on it, man, you're going to save a lot of money over buying a Rubicon. For you, those of you like me that are going to take it, do a whole lot of different upgrades to it, and then go wheel it, a Sport S Max tow package is definitely the way to go. I think that pretty much covers them. Okay, I'm, I'm filming this. You're filming? Yeah. Okay, well that's gonna cover our video on which Gladiator you, you should buy. Really thank Mike for letting us come out uh, to Benny Boyd. If you have any questions or comments, hit us up below. We we'll look forward to seeing you on the trail. Don't miss any of Bubba's adventures, tips, or builds. Click here to subscribe and click here to watch another video. Stay tuned.